Did you know that Grover was a skilled jazz flautist? Or that Elmo could pull off a fairly competent jazz guitar solo? Or that Ernie was the master of the jazz funk clavinet? If you grew up in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, the kids' shows you watched were chock full of jazz or black American music, whether you realized it or not. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. It's no secret that Sesame Street had a love for music of all kinds, but when it came to incorporating jazz or black American music into its lineup, they really went above and beyond. Guest stars like Dizzy Gillespie, Cab Calloway, Wynton Marsalis, Ray Charles, and Celia Cruz were a constant in the show's early days. But it wasn't just about the famous guest stars. They often incorporated jazz music or instrumentation into the show's original songs as well. We may not have always known who or what we were listening to, but our little ears were being exposed to some of the most musically rich experiences on the television landscape. Everything grows, everything living, animals, birds, and the fish in the sea. Not to mention one of the greatest jazz funk songs of all time. <laughs> Fred Rogers, who was a gifted pianist and songwriter himself, hired jazz pianist Johnny Costa to be his musical director in 1968. Together they would envision a musical landscape that would be unlike anything that had existed on children's television before or since. There's that puzzle that I brought with me. Oh, it's in the kitchen, isn't it? Johnny's jazz combo improvised the interstitial music that came to be the show's hallmark. It was sophisticated and thoughtful. And things to do together. I look forward to our times together. You make each day such a special day. You know how, by just your being yourself. He didn't believe in watering down his music to appeal to children. Fred Rogers, who loved jazz music, wrote most of the songs on the show, and Johnny's interpretive style fit his songs perfectly. You will look carefully, listen carefully. You will find a lot of things carefully. And he would occasionally have improvisational musicians come to the show and perform. People like Mary Lou Williams, Wynton Marsalis, and singer Tony Bennett. Sometimes isn't always. It isn't always. And of course, pianist Vince Guaraldi's jazz score for the Charlie Brown films is the stuff of legend. But our improvisational music education didn't stop there. Blues Clues was always finding ways to incorporate jazz elements into their score. Thanks. And true fans of black American music would hear a tip of the hat to pianist Thelonious Monk in every show. Blues can do what we can do. And you couldn't watch Little Bill without hearing jazz. I like this game. Now there have been films from the 2000s forward such as Monsters, Inc. <laughs> the Incredibles and soul. Who have carried that tradition forward. But I will forever be grateful to have grown up in an era where hearing jazz, improvisational music, and black American music was an everyday occurrence.